Boa tarde novamente. Vamos então dar início uh, a esta audição. I'm sweet, switch to English just to welcome to this commission, to this meeting. We will speak in Portuguese, but uh, if you want, uh, we can speak in English to explain something better, okay? And to start... Tem a entidade 10 minutos para falar. We don't need. My okay. Use the mic. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for your time and the, uh, having us here and listen to the uh, 21st century's the most uh, uh, atrocity of the century, basically. Uh, what's happening to my people today? As uh, many of you may already know, we have millions of people are incarcerated in the concentration camps, um, all innocent people not charged with any crimes, and then millions more are sent to the, the forced labor facilities and making China's uh, active genocide as a profitable venture. Um, almost one million Uyghur children are taken from their families, sent to government-run orphanages, and the, the Uyghur women are facing forced sterilizations, forced abortions, um, forcibly inserting IUD devices inside of their bodies. The Chinese uh, embassy used their official Twitter account last year, and was very proud, and they tweeted and said, the Uyghur women are no longer baby-making machines after they forcibly sterilizing almost all the, uh, the majority of the women who can bury a child. And uh, um, also I saw the list of the, the people here that we have members from the uh, uh, party uh, that protects uh, not just the, the labor and the human rights and all that, but also animal rights that remind me of something that PBS Frontline reported last, uh, two years ago, April 2020. Uh, the name of the show is China Undercover. And when a reporter asks the Chinese official in Xinjiang province, about those genocidal policies when he was talking about what kind of procedures that they were implementing against the Uyghur people. Uh, when the reporter says, is that the violation of their rights? And the, the Chinese official giggles and says, what rights? The Uyghur people don't have any rights. So it's not a matter of violating it when they don't have any human rights. So. Um, that's the current situation right now. Um, the genocide is not slowing down. Still, people are getting picked up and getting disappeared. My husband and I, we are the face of this genocide, actually. My husband's entire family, uh, family of 24 people, my in-laws, three of my sister-in-laws and their husbands, um, my parents-in-laws and the three of my sister-in-laws, their husbands and brother-in-law and his wife, 14 of their children from age two, three years to like teenagers, 16, 17 years old, they all disappeared from summer of 2017. And when I spoke about that, when I talked about um, my in-laws situation and the genocidal policies um, and the uh, exposing the conditions of the concentration camps in one of the think tanks in Washington, D.C. on September 5th, 2018. Six days after that, my first public speech, as an American citizen, I am living in America since uh, 1989 and I am a U.S. citizen since 1994. My own sister, a retired medical doctor, she was taken as a retaliation for my activism in America. More than four years now, I have absolutely no information on her whereabouts. 
I don't even know if she's still alive or not. She was 56 years old when she was taken. Today, she's 60 years old. At the beginning, when I was uh, raising her case, carrying her picture every place I went, to Geneva, to Brussels, in front of the European uh, Parliament, and the uh, front of the Chinese Embassy in DC, the Chinese Global Times Network, the official media, accused me for lying. They did actually official uh, article on me, calling me Rushen Abbas, stole someone else's photo, claiming it's her missing relatives, and spreading lies about China. That was December 19th, 2020, almost 15 months after they took her. Then, on a Christmas day, 2020, actually the uh, report was uh, 2019, and then 2020, on Christmas day, we heard from third party that uh, she was sentenced for 20 years on terrorism-related charges. Look at her. She's a grandma, well-educated, very kind, generous person. She's not active politically or religiously, nothing. She's just an ordinary, law-binding citizen of China. And she's being sentenced for 20 years on a secret trial with no evidence, no proof of life, no information on her whereabouts, but sentenced on the terrorism-related charges. And then when we did the press conference in the Congress with a few uh, lawmakers there, next day, Wang Wenbin, the Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson, he just uh, spelled out her name and said that she was sentenced in accordance with Chinese law. So which one? Am I a liar, making her up, or is she a criminal? So this is the situation, and unfortunately, my husband and the, uh, my story is not uh, unique. Every single Uyghur in diaspora, people are living in North America, or Australia, Japan, or Europe, everyone has one or more than a dozen family members are missing. So thank you so much, and we are here to uh, hear any questions or concerns you have. We came to ask for your help, because this is a humanity issue, and this is a, uh, China's war on women and the children, and the China's war on the free thought, original, uh, you know, any kind of original thought is a threat to the Chinese communist regime, and it's also war on the uh, freedom and the democracy. Thank you. And my husband wants to add a couple minutes. First of all, thank you to receive us. Maybe we are the first Uyghur ever came to Lisbon and you are receiving us. We are so grateful for your time. But uh, be truth be told, uh, this genocide related to uh, people of Portugal. True, former Prime Minister of Portugal and the current General Secretary of UN, Antonio Guterres in his time happening this genocide. Millions of children separated uh, from their parents and uh, educated in orphanage. Millions of uh, people are forced to uh, forced labor and as a work as a slave, and many are disappeared. We are talking about more than three million people in concentration camps, but we are not talking about the people who disappeared and the Chinese Communist government took all the wealth and the uh, property of the Uyghur people. They don't have, they put the uh, intellectual, writers, scholars, businessmen, showmaster, uh, anybody who is uh, important in the community, in the, the jail, and took our money, our wealth, and let us uh, uh, like an like a animal. And today, by the COVID zero policy in China, the, 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 there is so racism. While the Chinese Communist government is supplying Han Chinese population with medicine, food, and etc., they are not giving for the Uyghurs food on the medicine supply, no access. Many are dying. Even we, we get, you know, imagine in China is the surveillance is so massive, nobody can put anything out, but through this uh, starvation genocide, we get pictures from the country. Thank you.
Muito obrigado. Thank you, Mrs. Russian Abbas and uh, Mr. Abdul Hakim Idr Idris, I think. So, uh, tem agora a palavra os grupos parlamentares, quatro minutos para cada grupo parlamentar. Now we'll speak the members of the parliament. At, in the end, you have ten minutes again, ok? Uh, tem a palavra o Sr. Deputado Paulo Aruz Correia. Obrigado, Sr. Presidente, Sras. e Srs. Deputados. Começo naturalmente por cumprimentar a Sra. Ruxana Habas e agradecer desde logo a disponibilidade para estar aqui hoje a partilhar a, a, a sua história, uma história pessoal difícil, marcada, que ficou aqui bem clara. Dizer-lhe também e dar-lhe nota daquilo que tem sido a, a, a posição do, do, do Governo Português, do Estado Português, nas diversas nas diversas uh, instâncias uh, internacionais e dizer-lhe de forma muito clara uh, que para nós, uh, Grupo Parlamentar do Partido Socialista e creio que para todos aqui na, nesta casa, os direitos humanos são mesmo uh, uh, a trave mestra do nosso Estado de, de Direito Democrático e uh, a trave mestra de, de, de tudo aquilo que nós propugnamos e daquilo tudo que nós defendemos que deve ser uma democracia uh, evoluída. Dá-lhe apenas nota daquela que tem sido então a posição de Portugal e aquilo que tem sido feito e os passos que têm sido dados. A Associação dos Direitos Humanos na China é seguida atentamente por, por Portugal. Em face dos múltiplos alertas e relatórios internacionais de órgãos e peritos da ONU e de organizações não governamentais sobre a situação de direitos humanos em Hong Kong, no Tibete e no Xinjiang. Efetivamente, os Estados-membros têm manifestado sistematicamente a Pequim a sua preocupação relativamente a estas situações. Estas questões têm ainda sido recorrentemente abordadas nas agendas dos vários encontros entre a União Europeia e a República Popular da China, apelando-se a que a China cumpra as suas obrigações nacionais e internacionais de respeito, proteção e realização dos direitos humanos, designadamente no que respeita aos direitos de pessoas pertencentes a minorias, nomeadamente no Tibete e em Xinjiang. Acresce que, durante a presença portuguesa do Conselho da União Europeia, este tema conheceu os envolvimentos relevantes, tendo a União Europeia adotado, como penso ser de vosso conhecimento, em 22 de março de 2021, ao abrigo da recente, do recente regime global contra violações de direitos humanos da União Europeia, medidas restritivas a quatro pessoas e uma entidade chinesa da província de Xinjiang. A preocupação com a situação de direitos humanos na China também tem suscitado, em diversas ocasiões, nos encontros bilaterais mantidos com representantes da República Popular da China, Uh, uh, assim como nas competentes instâncias uh, uh, multilaterais, a preocupação do, do Estado português. Por fim, Portugal tem igualmente apelado, junto às autoridades chinesas, em defesa da adoção imediata, de uma moratória no uso da pena da morte, bem como para a ratificação do Pacto Internacional sobre os Direitos Civis e Políticos e do Protocolo Opcional ao Pacto Internacional sobre os Direitos Económicos, Sociais e Culturais. Esta é, portanto, uma problemática à qual nós, enquanto o Grupo Parlamentar, nós, enquanto Governo, e creio que todos nesta casa estão muito atentos, e continuaremos a acompanhar a evolução da situação, tentando assegurar que o cumprimento integral das obrigações nacionais e internacionais da China em matéria de proteção e realização dos direitos humanos. Muito obrigado, Sr. Deputado. Tem agora a palavra o Sr. Deputado André Coelho Lima, do Partido Social Democrata. Muito obrigado, Sr. Presidente. Uh, just one or two words previously to my uh, exposition. It's going to be in Portuguese, in Portuguese because uh, Portuguese people who are watching this uh, hearing, of course, need to understand what we are saying. But uh, just to say that uh, I was particularly shocked with one sentence that you used, that someone, some uh, public official, said there are no human rights here. So the only uh, sentence I, I, I want to share with you is that for us, for our party and for our country, there are human rights everywhere, all over the world. Even though not getting into specifics, um, I wanted you to know this before talking in Portuguese. Thank you. Agora em português, e tentando falar mais devagar para, para facilitar a tradução. Dizer que, dizer que, naturalmente, que esta questão é acompanhada pelo Estado português e, naturalmente, também devo dizer que acompanhamos as palavras que foram agora ditas pelo Sr. Deputado do Partido Socialista. Aliás, queríamos transmitir que, no que respeita a, a direito internacional, a cumprimento de, de, de regras de direitos humanos, os principais partidos e o país têm uma posição 
unívoca, tem uma posição de conjunto, não tem divergências. Ou seja, para nós, para Portugal, a defesa dos direitos humanos é uma prioridade, seja onde for. E aproveitando também a intervenção do Sr. Deputado do Partido Socialista, dar nota ou associar-me às informações que ele deu relativamente às iniciativas que Portugal tem já tido no que respeita à vossa, à vossa, enfim, àquelas que são as vossas reivindicações e aquilo para que nos estão a apelar. Dizer por último, que é fundamental dizer isto, que agradecer-vos terem vindo cá, agradecer-vos terem querido partilhar com o Parlamento Português esta realidade, nem sempre tão acompanhada pelo dia-a-dia, -dia, pelo cotidiano de um país como o nosso, e, portanto, isto é relevante nessa medida, e dizer, fazer este compromisso de partidos democratas num país democrático, de naturalmente, em todo o lado, não deixar de pugnar pela defesa dos direitos humanos. É esse o compromisso do Partido Social Democrata também para convosco. Muito obrigado. Muito obrigado, Sr. Deputado. Tem agora a palavra a Sra. Deputada Patrícia Gil Vaz, da Iniciativa Liberal. Obrigada, Sr. Coordenador. Oi. Nice to meet you. Uh, para a Iniciativa Liberal é uma honra receber a Sra. Roshan Habas, o seu marido e a sua comitiva, aqui nesta casa que representa a democracia portuguesa. Aproveito também para a congratular e manifestar o nosso apoio nesta vossa luta pelos direitos humanos, laborais, políticos, de todo o povo uigur, bem como expressar a nossa solidariedade com a situação que nos relatou, em particular a situação da sua irmã, também ela vítima das práticas arbitrárias e de detenção e encarceramento de membros desta comunidade. Desde 2014, que cerca de um milhão de uigures foram enviados para campos de reeducação, onde têm sido forçados a renunciar à sua religião e à sua consciência, sistematicamente violados, sujeitos à mais abjeta escravidão e torturados. Milhares de crianças foram separadas dos seus pais, das suas famílias, enviadas para internatos, para que se desliguem das suas raízes e declarem lealdade à ditadura totalitária do Partido Comunista Chinês. A violação dos mais básicos direitos humanos e políticos dos uigures tem sido objeto de atenção por parte da Iniciativa Liberal, que já na legislatura passada apresentou um projeto de resolução, uma recomendação ao Governo, solicitando, e passo a ler um dos parágrafos que constava neste, nesta resolução, no âmbito da presidência portuguesa do Conselho da União Europeia, pedimos que, que o governo português fizesse condicionar a finalização do acordo de investimentos com a China ao respeito pelos direitos humanos e laborais de todos os cidadãos naquele país, incluindo a libertação das minorias presas nos denominados campos de reeducação. Infelizmente, este projeto de resolução acabou por ser chumbado e rejeitado com os votos contra dos maiores partidos eh, portugueses, bem como pelo voto contra do Partido Comunista Português, que continua a negar e a ignorar esta atrocidade. É por, é por preconceito, também ele ideológico, contra uma comunidade e uma religião com o Partido Comunista Chinês, que clama pelo progressismo, oprime milhões de uigures dentro das suas fronteiras, pelas mesmas ideias que animam muitos identitários na Europa. A ideia é que se pode retirar a voz os direitos e a dignidade de comunidades inteiras, como a comunidade muçulmana, em nome da ideologia vigente ou do interesse nacional. Foi isso que nos que levou à prisão da sua irmã, um ato de terrorismo e separatismo, duas acusações fáceis não são, que não são mais nada do que areia atirada para os nossos olhos. No mais recente relatório das Nações Unidas sobre a matéria constam alegações de tortura, tratamentos médicos forçados, e violência sexual contra uh, uh, muçulmanos. A detenção arbitrária e discriminatória de pessoas da maioria igur pode constituir, sem dúvida, crimes contra a humanidade. É o que consta neste relatório. Não compreendemos como é que o governo português pode continuar a estreitar laços com este regime, tendo em abril defendido o reforço da cooperação com este país, que claramente, e está à vista de todos, continua a desrespeitar direitos humanos de minorias, apesar de se esforçar por negá-lo. Existem relatos de tensões arbitrárias, 
A Iniciativa Liberal deixa assim aqui o seu compromisso de que fará tudo o que estiver ao nosso alcance para combater esta realidade, manifestando a nossa absoluta intransigência contra regimes que não respeitam e, pior, que perseguem e punem o exercício das mais básicas liberdades, como a liberdade religiosa. Thank you. Muito obrigado, Sra. Deputada. Tem agora a palavra a Sra. Deputada Inês de Sousa Real, do Pessoas, Animais e Natureza. Obrigada, Sr. Presidente. Uh, thank you so much for your presence. It is with great honor that we receive you all here today. Uh, Madam Russian Abbas, uh, Mr. Abdul Abram Hirich. Peço desculpa, não tinha visto. Não tinha visto, estavas desse lado. Peço desculpa. Uh, Mr. Abdul uh, Hakim Hidris, uh, Madam Hilisa Hotri, and Madam Georgina Felix. Uh, on behalf of the party People, Animals and Nature, I begin to welcome you uh, and, great, uh, what, and mention what great honor it is to receive. Uh, allow me a particular word uh, to Madam Russian Havas. It is a great inspiration and uh, proud to see the defense that you are doing on behalf of the people of Uyghur uh, against China atrocities uh, because it is uh, forward to human rights that should be recognized everywhere. Uh, taking advantage of your presence, we would like to share some information about the action that our party has taken forward in the defense of the Uyghur people and, and warn about the, the atrocities committed by China. Uh, in November 2019, we presented and managed to pass a vote of grating for the award of 2019 Sekharov Prize. Uh, and condemning the systematic violations uh, of the rights of the Uyghur minorities in China. Uh, unfortunately, not only the, the political force uh, joined us, we had uh, the abstention of the, the Socialist Party, uh, the Communist Party, uh, they voted against. But uh, in November 2019, we demanded again in the, this uh, parliament to take a position uh, on the information provided by the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists released uh, worrying information about the internment uh, centers of Xinjiang region uh, that demonstrated that the, the Uyghur prisoners uh, were uh, uh, there against their will. So this is a system of armed surveillance and cameras with blind spots, that's the information we also have, and with ideological education. And in democracy, uh, in plain century uh, 21, we can no longer allow this, and we believe that the international community has a duty also to uh, uh, express their concerns and express uh, that they are not uh, 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 in favor of this kind of regimes. Um, also, uh, in March uh, 2021, PAN proposed that the Portuguese parliament formally recognize the Uyghur people in China were are, and are being subject to genocide. I believe that the recognition uh, of this statement will be, uh, it's important, uh, independent of the country that does it. And also, uh, we wanted Portugal to do that, uh, what was done by the United States of America and the European Parliament, France, Sweden, Canada, the Neanderthals, and also the United Kingdom. We want the Portuguese pa Parliament not to stand still uh, a face of that data that tells us that China and the Chinese authorities uh, regularly and systematically submitted women from Muslim ethnic minorities and mostly uh, Uyghurs to pregnancy, as we listened to you saying, and forcing them to intrauterine devices uh, and other practices that you already uh, told us. However, this position that we defended was rejected uh, because the, majority, the parliamentary majority did not uh, 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 vote it in favor. But uh, we uh, denounced it and we will uh, be continuing to denounce these atrocities. There are two questions that we would like to pose uh, uh, taking profit of your presence here. One uh, is, uh, in your opinion, uh, if the, the Congressional Executive Commission on China presented a report uh, showing that one of the components of the repressi repressive system in Xinjiang internment centers is a system of forced labor carried on factories located in the centers themselves, uh, in factories in the region and even in factories outside in the region. According to this report, 
the faucet light, uh, the faucet labor system has been used in the production of uh, textiles, electronic products. Are you aware that the brands are doing something to avoid to use uh, these uh, uh, disposals and trying to protect human rights? It would be very important also to understand uh, in the, uh, the commercial perspective what is being doing to respect the human rights. And once again, thank you so much for your presence. Muito obrigado, Sra. Deputada. Tem agora a palavra a Sra. Deputada Joana Mortágua, do Bloco de Esquerda, a quem peço sinceras desculpas não, pelo lapso regimental, não, peço, não, peço, não lhe ter porque... dado primeiro a palavra. Mas, enfim. Uh, era só por confusão, porque eu sei que estar deste lado também não ajuda. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, I represent the left bloc. Uh, it's uh, one of the left wing parties in the parliament. I will speak in Portuguese, so uh, everyone who wants to, to see this on TV can understand. Um, o, partido, o Bloco de Esquerda é um dos partidos que tem sempre votado a favor de todos os votos projetos e tem proposto também um, repúdios a, ao governo chinês e ao regime chinês pelos ataques aos direitos humanos. Fazemos sem uh, dualidade de critérios. Temos uh, sobre o povo iogur a mesma solidariedade e a mesma uh, vontade de, de, de defesa dos direitos humanos que dedicamos ao povo da Palestina, uh, do Sahara Ocidental, a uh, todos os povos e minorias que sofrem uh, genocídio ou perseguição ou simplesmente uh, de, lutam pelo direito à autodeterminação dos seus uh, territórios, fazemos-lo com muita convicção. E por isso, nos últimos 15 anos, houve duas visitas de Estado um, à China, do Presidente da República Português e do Governo, nas quais nós recusámos participar, da mesma forma como recusámos participar nas recessões oficiais aos presidentes chineses que vieram a Portugal, precisamente em protesto pelas violações de, de direitos humanos. É isso que continuaremos a fazer e esperamos que a sua presença aqui, a vossa presença aqui, que seja também importante para chegar não só aos partidos que já defendem estes direitos com tanta convicção, mas sobretudo aos grandes, aos partidos maiores que têm governado e que dirigem a política externa de Portugal. Obrigada. Muito obrigado, Sra. Deputada. So, you have 10 minutes. And thank you so much for all your very uh, generous comments. And it seems like everybody is uh, pretty much aware of what's happening. Also, the Chinese government is continuously lying and denying it. Um, just like at the beginning, uh, when the concentration camps came to the a picture with satellite imageries they uh, completely denied in United Nations and said that, that there's no such a thing, it's all lies, there's absolutely no such a thing. And then later they uh, came back and said, oh yeah, we do have camps, but those are re-education camps. And then changed their narrative again two months later and said oh, those are vocational training centers. So that's typical Chinese government. Um, but. It's not just that we, as the victims of families, speaking here in front of you, but also there are three sets of Chinese government's own leaked documents out there that's available. So um, a country like Portugal, a democratic country, a member of the European Union, and the, uh, we just saw your constitution that uh, uh, had the celebration of 200 years in a couple of weeks ago. I'm very proud of a country like this, and we are here to have the opportunity to speak to you. But uh, as uh, um, the members of the parliament said here, this is a fundamental rights of human beings. It's the conscience of the humanity is being attacked and being tested in front of you. And the, the international community is failing the test because of the Chinese government's um, the uh, Chinese government's influence within the governments because of the money, power, and the uh, trade threats, and the previous uh, deals 
So now they are asking probably payback times for the governments to stay silent or take China's side. So please take the right side, not the China's side, the Chinese government's side, because genocide and the slavery is our red line. And that's what's happening in the 21st century on your watch. Every one of you will be responsible in the future when this goes down to the history. When your children and grandchildren ask you, so what did you do when you knew this was happening? And I hope that you will be able to proudly answer, I did my part. So this is the time that you need to take a part. The, uh, United uh, Nations have a report now. Also, they also went into the appeasement and watered down the words and took out the parts that really falls into the genocide. Still, they documented, documented step by step, the descriptions of the genocide in their own, the United Nations own treaty on the Convention on the, the Crimes of Genocide. And they said it may constitute crimes against humanity. But there is a report there with the descriptions of all these crimes that's being committed. So the Chinese government no longer can deny, no longer can uh, pressure the governments. So please be the right side because there is no neutrality. Neutrality is complicit now with the genocide. So again, you know, I beg you as the defenders of the human rights and the, uh, the lawmakers of the democratic country, it's your turn to do something, take some tangible actions. Uh, there is a uh, initiative being introduced two days ago um, at the uh, United Nations, the, the US, UK, and Sweden, Norway, Finland, um, Canada and a few other countries, they asked to have a debate in the Human Rights Council. Absurdly, after years of active genocide, after so many evidence being presented, we are still debating it, but still that's one step. Please at least support the debate, support this initiative so we can have that debate. Secondly, the slavery should not be happening today. But because, uh, I think uh, you asked me that question, um, according to SP, Australian Strategic uh, Policy Institute, there are more than 100 world brand names using the Uyghur slaves for their supply chains. And the, every one out of five garments came, uh, the cotton, the garments made by cotton, come from the cotton picked by Uyghur slaves that getting paid for nothing, and they cannot refuse to go to the field. They have to go as a free laborers. That's a modern day slavery. If you cannot refuse, if you cannot uh, uh, say that uh, you, know, you don't want to do this, but do that, or you don't get paid for wor your work. So actually that power the China is having because of the Uyghur slaves sweat and the tears is making China strong to manipulate and pressure and the, uh, uh, put, you know, try to influence the governments to take their sides, the Muslim majority countries and the other countries, other developing countries, but Portugal doesn't need that today. Portugal can stand up for humanity and the, Portugal can refuse to slave, uh, to receive products made by slave labor. So in European Union, there is an import ban and the resolution being introduced, please take a part. And it's against the European country's values, against the Portugal people's values. We should not be using or having the goods made by slaves. All humanity is supposed to be the same. So please do whatever you can. Thank you. And I just want to add one more point, actually. When the politicians, lawmakers, world leaders, when they give up their 
conscious, and when they take a side with the genocidal regime, when they do not do anything and stay silent, remember, they are not just giving up their freedom of speech or freedom of expression. Little by little, they are giving up their freedom and the democracy and the sovereignty of their countries, because that's what's at stake. The Chinese government is not just the waging war on Uyghurs and the um, doing uh, oppression in Tibet, or you saw what happened in Hong Kong and threatening Taiwan. No, the Chinese government calls last century as a century of humiliation because Portugal was owning Macau, Great Britain was taking Hong Kong, that's opium war and all that. But they have been preparing themselves for this century and they call this century, century of retaliation. It's not retaliation against Uyghurs or Tibetans, it's retaliation against the West, against the democracy and the freedom, against the countries like Portugal, UK, US, everywhere. So what's at stake here is not just the future of the Uyghurs anymore. It's the freedom and the democracy and the, the world that we are leaving behind for our children and for our grandchildren. That's what's at stake. I heard recently someone is saying, when we are talking about the uh, Putin's, uh, Russia's war on Ukraine, he said, if we don't end the dictatorships, the dictatorships will end us. And the Putin's war is a very great example of what happens when you continue to appease the dictatorship governments when you know what they are doing. So please take a stance. Thank you. Yes, yes. Two minutes, okay. You know, uh, as Uyghurs, uh, we uh, are here to ask your help. But same time, we want to help you to protect your sovereignty. Study this Uyghur cause. Uyghur, Uyghur case, you know how to deal with Chinese uh, totalitarian Communist Party. Look at Tibet, look at Hong Kong. In China, the Christian Falun Gongs, many people disappeared. And uh, this is uh, uh, for us to, to, to tell you, to warn you, uh, they don't need to, uh, you know, uh, uh, occupy or uh, colonize like before ships or tanks or plane. They just came with the smile, with the money. They corrupted the politicians, take over media, take over business, and they don't need to put their money in the media. The company, do, they do business with China, they will uh, put the money in the media, and the, the, you will lose your uh, uh, freedom of speech, and dignity, so, social work. And we are, as Uyghur people, maybe from the face, from the tradition, from the emotion, we are very easily happy, easily angry. We are like Portugal people. If you look in and go in the Kashgar, you think you are one of them. I th I'm here going in the city, I think I'm one of the Portugal people, yeah? If the Chinese communist government cannot tolerate me, my face, my skin, my belief, my look, they cannot uh, let anybody else. That's what I want to say, thank you. Thank you. Muito obrigado. Damos por concluída esta reunião, agradecendo aos senhores deputados e particularmente à senhora Russian Abbas. Thank you again. We are concluding this meeting. Uh, thanks for the information that you brought here. Thanks to all delegation. Abdul Lakim Hidris, Inspector General of the World Uyghur Congress, Elisa Autry, I think Autry. Uh, for Regan Affairs Officer and uh, Georgina Felix, a sort of Politica da Embaixada uh, dos Estados Unidos. Uh, let me say that this, this is a public meeting and is available in the Parliament website to everyone. Okay? Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.